This webinar is called Application Domain Partitioning and is going to focus on how to provide secure communications for a smart grid infrastructure. This webinar is going to talk about how a converged multi-tier communications infrastructure can be segmented into multiple virtual domains to provide applications, each with their own security levels and quality of service performance to ensure end-to-end -end security and traffic performance across this network. Before we start talking about application domain partitioning, I'd like to start off by talking about the general needs for a communications infrastructure. Two-way communications enables utilities to monitor and control the electric grid, and integrated communications is required to enable smart grid applications. Integration ties together the various components of the grid to provide utilities with the data necessary to provide automation and ensure quality. The term smart grid, unfortunately, could mean many different definitions depending on who you're talking to. For most people, smart grid refers to more than just automated meter reading. And this slide is designed to go through the various different definitions of smart grid. On the left, you're gonna see AMR, which stands for automated meter reading, which has been around for two decades and provides a way to automate a once manual process of reading meters. It has tangible benefits and has a proven financial return. Over the last two or three years, we have seen more interest in what's called AMI, or Advanced Metering Infrastructure, which takes the one-way communication of AMR and evolves that to two-way communication between the head end and the meters to enable applications like remote connect and disconnect, outage management, and time of use billing. But AMI on its own doesn't get to the full vision of a smart grid communications network, which is described on the right. Smart grid in this case extends not just to the meters, but also out to the consumers for demand response applications, as well as the distribution network for distribution automation. Realizing the smart grid requires not only two-way communication, but also high bandwidth and low latency throughout the network in order to integrate communications across a converged network. A smart grid communications network that integrates these different tiers of a network involves multiple different organizations, each with multiple applications. What we're showing here on this slide is what smart grid means to the various different organizations that a communications infrastructure touches. So for distribution, a smart grid means substation automation and distribution automation and being able to provide SCADA throughout the distribution grid and being able to monitor and control devices like transformers and reclosers. For the metering organization, a smart grid network is all about automating meter reading and providing that remote disconnect capability, reporting on voltages and providing outage management and power restoration. On the consumer side, of course, this is where a smart grid has a lot of value in terms of providing dynamic pricing and direct load control and enabling applications for the, for the future, such as smart charging of plug-in electric vehicles and providing distributed generation for devices like solar panels on the roofs of homes. This converged network with multiple different organizations ends up into multiple different distinct communication tiers. So when we talk about consumer networking, we focus on what's called a home area network. And this is networking within the home to provide communications to devices like meters, in-home displays, thermostats, and direct load controls. Neighborhood area network provides the communication between meters to automate the meter reading applications and enable advanced metering applications. The distribution network is tied into what we call the wide area networking tier. And this is providing the long range communications that connect up substations and other distribution devices. And finally, all of this gets provided back to the head end software for the different organizations and their head end systems. So we've talked about the multiple tiers of a smart grid network. And now I'm gonna hand it off to Randy Fry to talk about the requirements for security and quality of service 
across a multi-application network. Thank you, Brian. One basic requirement of a multi-application network is there must be sufficient capacity for all of the traffic from all the applications, and the network must have latency low enough for the most latency-sensitive application. This requirement was simpler when the smart grid was just AMR and AMI, but now that the smart grid deployments have the additional requirement of distribution automation, mobile workforce data services, and video surveillance, supporting these applications may require a different class of network. The diagram above shows the additive nature of the application's capacity requirements, where the capacity required by each application is summed. The capacity of some basic classes of network are also shown, from legacy narrowband wireless to fiber. Latency requirements are not additive, however, and the network must provide latency low enough for the most latency-sensitive application. In addition to providing sufficient capacity and low enough latency, the network should also employ network partitioning to isolate the applications and should also provide end-to-end -end quality of service for each application. This table shows some quality of service and security requirements of many smart grid applications. Smart grid applications have drastically different latency tolerances ranging from milliseconds to seconds and different throughput requirements. Applications like protective relaying may require latencies down in the tens of milliseconds while firmware downloads can often tolerate high latencies. And while security is obviously an important part of all smart grid applications, different applications may have different security requirements. For instance, privacy and authentication is critical for meter reading, while recloser control absolutely needs strong access control. And users of different applications may even desire different security and authorization systems. The details of the different applications' requirements won't be described here in detail, though. The main point is that different applications have dis drastically different requirements of the underlying network. This diagram shows some potential issues with running different applications over a common network. In a multi-application network, traffic of each application may affect the performance of all other applications. And while the Internet Protocol, or IP, may be an important tool for smart grid, IP does not natively include quality of service, so IP in itself is not a solution. The bubble on the left shows that latency tolerant traffic, such as firmware downloads, could disrupt latency sensitive traffic, such as grid control. The bubble on the right shows traffic from in-home devices could delay time sensitive protective relaying messages. And the uncoordinated nature of the applications makes this problem much worse. It's difficult to coordinate the users of the different applications at the head end in many types of traffic, such as device-initiated traffic like events and alarms, cannot be coordinated. This diagram shows a potential security vulnerability of a converged network. In this scenario, an internal user of one application may be able to access devices of other applications. For instance, an employee using the metering system might access a customer's load shedding devices. This may be malicious, accidental, or somewhere in between. This diagram shows one example of an external breach. Specifically, a device within a home that is hacked could then provide access to other similar devices in other homes, or even more concerning, could provide access to devices of other applications, such as the SCADA system shown in the diagram. This situation was recently popularized in a report by IOActive, where they showed that a meter is hacked could then compromise the entire meter network. In a multi-application network, other systems might also be compromised in such a situation. This diagram shows an example of a malicious attack on the grid. Distribution substations are remotely deployed, making them vulnerable to physical attacks. If one substation was infiltrated, other substations could then be compromised over the network. There are obviously many different potential quality of service vulnerabilities and security compromises in a smart grid network, including some that haven't even been thought of yet. So these examples are not meant to cover all the possibilities, but they're simply illustrating a few types. 